Oh, Manulife, Stelco, and there's Ken Roscoe sneaking in there. Most top executives think they contribute to their company's bottom line, but a new study says that they don't. Now, Susan Lucia Nunzio is the chairman and chief executive officer of Hudson Highland Center for High Performance and author of a new book, which is called Contagious Success. And she joins us from New York to talk about her study. And Susan, what were you trying to uh, uncover when you initiated this study? Well, what we were looking for is what will drive sustainable, profitable growth in these uncertain economic times. We studied knowledge workers, the best and brightest people around the world, to determine what was their experience in their work group. Were they actually making money for their company and creating anything new to help grow their top line? A new market, new service, new product? And what did you find? Well, the startling conclusion to our study is that only 10% of the best educated, most highly paid workers in the world are part of high-performing work groups. That means 90% are not. Are not helping their companies increase their revenues and profits, but I thought that was the whole game. I mean, why are they missing the boat? Well, we looked at what was destroying high performance around the world, and the number one answer, regardless of what country we studied or what industry, was the short-term focus. The need to make those quarterly expense goals at the cost of doing what many people around the world believe is right for the future of the company. Okay, a, a couple of questions then. How do you measure uh, high performance, and then how do you put that in the context of short-term versus medium-term and long-term? Well, what we looked at is the last three years, we believe, have been the toughest economic times. And what we tried to say is during those last three years, was the group you work in, were you able to grow revenues or profits for your, uh, revenues or profits for your company? And were you able to create something to help differentiate your company today? The importance of that differentiation is that if companies aren't operationally excellent today, they're out of business. And if you can't differentiate by growing your top line, the the likelihood of you sticking around for the long term isn't very high. Why do you say it's uh, exacerbated in the last few years? I mean, things like corporate governance and things like that have been around to distract people? No, I think what's really been happening as companies have downsized and tried to cut their way to success, the full effect of commoditization, globalization, competing marketplaces have really made it more difficult for companies to compete. So for example, if you happen to be a company that sells cement, the, the industry is so consolidated that the ability to make money off the margin has been reduced. So how do you differentiate? How do you use your best paid employees to create the type of innovation we need in the future to grow the top line? And what we're finding universally around the world is that it isn't happening. 40% of the knowledge workers are doing things to cut costs. They are doing initiatives in terms of efficiencies. But only 17% of these same knowledge workers are doing anything in the innovative space. You do have some uh, examples of successes. Microsoft in the UK, for instance, might be one of those. Yes, Microsoft in the UK was a great example. The CFO of Microsoft took over the HR department because they were failing badly in their ability to recruit the best and brightest. And what he did was really look at how can we look at our HR department strategically to create environments where the best people could do their best thinking. As a result, Microsoft UK is now not only an employer uh, of choice, they make 30% more revenues per employee than any other division of Microsoft around the world. Hmm. I also noted Kellogg's, Kellogg's was in your uh, successful category. Yes, Kellogg's uh, Food Away From Home group. What this group did, similar to Microsoft, although they had the same target goals, the need to make money to create innovation, both at Microsoft and at Kellogg, they created a work environment where smart people felt they could smart, be, be smart. For example, people said things like, we were told what to do, not how to do it. Our work was really valued. Whereas in the companies that weren't doing well or in the groups that weren't making money, they felt they were being micromanaged, that information was being hoarded from them, that it was about the self-interest of the leader, not about the development of the group. Yeah, it's amazing when you talk to an executive, they obviously think that they're doing a good job and that what you're saying is the reality doesn't exist. There's a gap there in perception. Uh, why? 
Well, one of the most startling findings on our study was that we, we determined that a necessary condition of this sustainable, profitable growth around the world was that the leader of the work group spent their time protecting the group from the company at large combating policies and procedures that the company created that were actually getting in the way of, the, of him driving results. Now, I work with senior leaders around the world, and I haven't met the senior leadership team who's sitting around a boardroom saying, how can we stifle the performance of our best teams? Uh -huh. And yet it's happening worldwide. Wow, isn't that something? Susan, I read it with interest. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you very much. Susan Lucia uh, Anunzio is the Chief Executive Officer of Hudson Highland Center for High Performance.